together with Neurosports bitch. Yeah, the twins, they be checking in. Stacking up green is the scene that you're stepping in. Winning is a trend, and we stay making dollars. Nerd talk with the sports bet scholars. We are live. Welcome back to another edition of the Euro Sports Bet Show. My name is Nicholas, Nicholas Ramadan. Here as always by my brother Tim. And today, well, not today, tomorrow is opening day baseball. We're going to go over all the baseball games tonight because uh, there's also a 14-game NHL card tomorrow. There's March Madness, Sweet 16 tomorrow. So our show tomorrow will be focused on hockey and college basketball. This will be the show for the MLB. So uh, we have no recap to go over because, well, the games are still going on right now. Currently Boston down one nothing, so they're not looking great there. But uh, other than that, I know we have a couple NBA spots. But uh, we will be looking at the MLB for this card here. Um, so we uh, can get right into it. Uh, I feel like. We don't really have much to go over. No chat at the moment. Uh, so we will get it started. And we'll, we'll get started with the team that, uh, that that Tim is wearing over there. We have the Baltimore Orioles. Minus 190 favorites. Total of seven and a half in this game against the LA Angels. We got Corbin Burns taking on Patrick Sandoval. Corbin Burns obviously getting traded from the Milwaukee Brewers to the Baltimore Orioles in the offseason. Um, this line opened up at a minus 180. It's moved up to a minus 183. So we've had a three cent line movement here towards the Baltimore Orioles. This line opened up at a minus 120 for the um, uh, for the over seven and a half. It's now a minus 105 in this game. Uh, taking a look at the cash flow here. Uh, let me get it over from the NHL to the MLB. I should be prepared here. We have 90% of the tickets, but only 61% of the cash is on the Baltimore Orioles on the money line. 71% of the tickets is on the puck, or the puck line. On the run line here, we do have 8,600 tickets in. So we got a decent amount of tickets in for some of these games, considering it's the night before. 50-50 uh, split on the total in this game as well, with the line moving towards the under. Um, and this game here for me, when you look at these two teams, obviously the um, the Angels are not a good baseball team. I don't think that's really split in Adams saying that they're not a great team. Um, but uh, when we look at this matchup here, I kind of think they could be a little sneaky in this game. And uh, this Baltimore team, I feel like, is getting – hyped but i think a little bit too much hype and we'll and i know we can beg to differ on that one i know we disagree on this team again i i the baltimore orioles will win their first share of games but i see them more as like an 84 to 86 win team this year um but it is what it is i've moved on the angels in the first five innings in this spot at plus 150 i don't trust the angels bullpen and we know Baltimore, I think, definitely has the bullpen advantage. And, and I'm not saying Baltimore is not the better team in this spot. They're absolutely the better team in this game. They should win this game. But when taking a uh, – for me, when taking a team that is worse, like the Angels here, I'm going to limit the game down as much as possible. I'm just going to go with the first five innings at plus 150 for the Angels here. I can see them up a run or two at the end of five innings. And then falling apart late in this game. Baltimore rallies late and wins this game and even covers a run line potentially as well. Uh, but I am on the LA Angels here to kick off the MLB season in the first five innings at plus 150. I've moved on a bunch of games, by the way, already. Uh, and there's a couple spots I'm kind of looking at as well. Uh, I had a couple spots bet. I'll be obviously, we're not starting with a couple games because we've already got two games postponed. But uh, yeah, I'm going to kick off the MLB season here. Angels, first five bunny line for me at plus 150. Good. We could start off with a disagreement. I'm on the Oriole hype train. Um, let's see. I've done this the past two years. Uh, Baltimore Orioles every single day. Um, and I'm just – I it's – just to give you an idea, and we'll, I, I know you probably hate this stat or whatever. Last year, most profitable team in baseball was the Baltimore Orioles. Um, they – you if you bet them every single day, you're up $3,100. 
hundred dollar units. Twenty twenty three, most profitable team in baseball. You got it, the Baltimore Orioles. You're up twenty seven hundred. So the last two seasons, if you bet the Orioles every single game, you're up about fifty eight hundred dollars. Um, I'm not going to defer from that wagon any, uh, again. Um, you can go and try to fade them. That's fine. Um, team total overs for Baltimore is going to be big this year. They have a very, very solid offense. Their pitching staff is – if if you think it was missing one thing last year. It's an ace. It's an ace. Corbin Burns is the ace. Uh, this is going to be a very dangerous Baltimore Orioles team. I think they're the best team in baseball. I think they will be the best team in baseball this year. I know a lot of people will say the Dodgers, the Braves, even the Astros, and then the Baltimore Orioles. Yeah. Will be the, the Baltimore Orioles will be the best team in baseball. It starts tomorrow. I'm on the Orioles run line at plus 110 to start off the year. Yeah, no, and I can see the Orioles being a good live bet in this game because I think they'll they'll be down uh, at the end of five, and then you can probably live bet the Orioles to make a little bit of a rally. Um, and the over's not a bad look in this game with how bad I think the Angels' bullpen is going to be this year, which is why I don't want the Angels more than the first five is I just don't want that bullpen. So that's another way to approach it is uh, may, maybe looking at an over in this game as well. I don't hate that idea. Um I, I just I'm just gonna roll with the with the angel oh, with the uh, Orioles run line tomorrow. Here, uh, head to the chat where John, uh, Joseph Thomas is saying, "What up, boys? Let's get that cash. Let's do it tonight." Um, Nicholas is waving. Welcome aboard. Welcome. The uh, O's are gonna be tricky this year. The books are gonna take a lot of value out. They will. I I I, I, and I was wondering that too. Is yeah, they've been the most profitable team in baseball the last two years, but now everybody's expecting them to be good. Yeah, and I still like them. I, so. think, I, I still think there's going to be value in them this year. So, uh, yes, real deal. Baseball is back. We could put that sport that's on ice skates behind us because um, we we've got a we've got the best sport coming back. So happy with that. Uh, let's keep rolling to this game, Nick. Yeah, and this is a this is a spot I really like. I know you like it as well. I think you're going to do a free pick video on this game tonight, if I'm not mistaken. I, I, yes, I thought I, I saw you set up. I, yep, I saw you have that room set up. I've already recorded mine. Uh, but uh, we have the Kansas City Royals and the Minnesota Twins in this game here. Line opened up at a minus 120 on bet online. Now, all these odds that you see right here are from DraftKings. Uh, and I round up, round down to uh, an even number is kind of the way I do that. Um, so these are all DraftKings odds. Um, minus 120. For the uh, Twins, total of eight in this game. Uh, line opened up at a minus 120 for the Twins. It's down to a 113 on bet online. Uh, and then we have this line opened up at an eight and a half at even money. It's now an eight at minus 102. So we've had a move towards the under, and we've had a move towards the Kansas City Royals in this game. The Royals are a team that I'm high on. I know you're high on, Tim. We have 69% of the tickets are on the Royals in this game. The line has moved towards KC in this spot. 89% of the tickets, 88% of the cash on the under, and the lines moved from an eight and a half down to an eight. So I understand the line move here towards the under with the amount of money coming in on them and th- uh, on it there. And um, I am on the Kansas City Royals here. I want Cole Reagans. That's what I want to back in this game. The Royals are still a tricky commodity, and their bullpen's still going to be terrible. Uh, that's the no, one thing. Bullpen, I think their bullpen's improved. Yeah, uh, kind of. That's that, but but let me let me try to read for it. The thing I'm most concerned about with their bull, with the uh, with the Royals is their bullpen. Um, because when you look at what's in their bullpen there, because I like their lineup, it has potential. Their rotation looks decent. They got a couple nice starters: Reagan's, Lu, Reagan's, uh, Lugo, Singer, Waka, Marsh. It's not a, uh, take out Marsh. Marsh is not great, but uh, their bullpens though kind of actually. Wow, actually, I did not really look at that too much, and actually, it looks like they've improved bullpen wise. Uh, James MacArthur and Will Smith on the back end with John Schreiber, uh, Nick Anderson, Chris Stratton, Angel Zerpa. That's actually not a bad bullpen, and uh, Jordan Lyles is in that bullpen as well. That's that's ugly, but uh, wow, actually, this bullpen's looking a little bit better than I thought it would. However, I just want to focus on the first five innings in this game as well. And that's something I like to do in baseball. I don't bet many first halves. I don't bet many first periods. I love my first fives. 
Um, I am a first five type of guy. It's very rare I bet full games. When I do, it's usually a double up or it's an over uh, where I'll double up first five full game. You'll see that with a few teams here uh, on the uh, card. Or it's when teams I notice have a significant bullpen advantage like we'll get into in a couple games here. Uh, but for me in this spot, I got minus 104. I'm on the Kansas City Royals in the first five innings in Cole Reagan's. We trust in this one. I kind of like Cole Reagan's Cy Young. I like the Royals over their win total. I like a sprinkle on the AL Central. I'll probably post out. I don't know if I'm going to be betting any futures, but I'll probably post out if I were to bet futures what they would be type of thing. Um, But, yeah, I would look Royals futures as well. I think this is going to be a surprise little baseball team this year. I'm super high on the Royals, too. They've got some young guys. Um, Obviously, very high on Cole Reagans. Uh, I know Higgs is as well. Um, We've seen – I see him – being a top three candidate for the Cy Young this year, I think he's going to be that good. And when it comes to it, I'm going to I'm going to back him in probably most of his starts. Now, I will say another guy that might be top three for the AL Cy Young this year is the guy he's going up against in Pablo Lopez, who's going to be a very solid pitcher. There's a chance that the top three pitchers for the AL Cy Young are all in the AL Central. Um, True we'll talk- as well. Uh. Yes. Um, and, and we'll, yeah, we'll obviously talk about the next one in a couple of games. Um, but Reagan's, I think, is going to be a really solid pitcher. And more importantly, I think this this offense for Kansas City is going to be improved, and their bullpen is going to be vastly improved from last year. They made some upgrades that I really like. I'm high on this Royals team. I'm taking them as a home dog to start it off. Uh, I can get it at minus 102 on DK. I like it. Yeah, this KC team, especially with Cole Reagans, I think you can basically, whenever you see the MLB slate pop up and it says Cole Reagans is pitching for the Kansas City Royals, you can probably pencil Royals, in KC, for, KC first five for me. Yeah, KC money one. Yeah. Type uh, of thing. Royals might be the new Orioles. Yes. I think that's what Would we be surprised if – at the end of the year, we look back and go, and, and we see the results and says Kansas City was the most profitable team in baseball. No, I would not be. They have that yeah, type. I think they, I think they can absolutely, with the where they're going to be priced, be the most profitable team in the American League. A lot of young talent with Kansas City. I'm, I'm a big fan of Kansas City this year. I'm going to be betting them a lot as dogs. Yes. Uh, yeah. Boston goal. Uh, it was scored by Heenan, and more importantly, Anton Heenan assisted by Zaka. There we Cash go. It. There's there's one of my props. Um, trust me, I don't bet the Twins. I live in the Twin Cities. They finally won a playoff game slash series, and they get rid of payroll like normal Twins. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Twins could be decent, though. I was high on the Twins last year. Uh, I had their division future last year. I had them over their wins last year. I, I thought that Twins team was going to be very good at that price tag to win the division. And I'm not as high on them this year because – they did lose a few pieces, but can Byron Buxton stay healthy? No. Can we get him healthy for more than two months at a time? Like, is that too much to ask? No, it's, no, it, that's, that's too much to ask. I figured as much. Uh, twins regression year. Yes. I absolutely could see that. If you want twins to miss the playoffs, I think it's not a terrible look. There you go. Thank you uh, for the show, y'all. Good vibes and good luck tomorrow. Let's get it. Uh. That division is always a fist fight. Different team wins each year. I Yeah, I could definitely see that. Let's head to this game, and I know we have different opinions. I'm not sure if I'm probably going to end up getting to one play in this game. Yeah, I haven't bet this game yet, but I will be betting this game. And we have the L.A. Dodgers minus 230 favorites, total of eight and a half in this game. Uh, let's get up the line history in this spot here. We have Miles Michaelis taking on. Tyler Glass now in this one here. The line opened up at a 210 for the Dodgers. No surprise. It's moved towards the Dodgers. Minus 223. Line opened up at an 8.5 and minus 120. It has stayed there. Uh, <coughs> taking a look at the cash flow in this one here. We had 33% of the tickets are on the Cardinals. 99% of the cash, which uh, with 78, uh, 191 tickets in. Most of the money coming in on the Dodger run line at minus uh, one and a half around the minus 110 range at 80% of the tickets there. So that's one thing we'll notice a lot with the Dodger games is you'll see the big bets coming in on the opponent's money line 
especially when the Dodgers are this type of favorites um, and all, all the bets on the Dodgers coming in on the run line. Um, I think the, the tickets you're seeing coming in on the Dodgers money line right now is just parlays. If that, I think that's the only thing it really is for the Dodgers. And for me, I'm going to, I'm going to just sit back and sit on my hands for this one here. Um, and let the public just put the Dodger money line in every parlay they do. Everybody bet the Dodger run line because they're the greatest team that's ever touched a freaking baseball field. And then when this island hits around plus 215, plus 220 with the St. Louis Cardinals, I'm going to bet the Redbirds on uh, this game. I'm, I have full intentions on fading the Dodgers on the money line every game this year. Um, I think that's going to be my strategy where even if I go 62 and 100 and the Dodgers win 100 games this year, I think I'm going to be profitable. I think I'll be profitable if I only win 62 bets fading the Dodgers this year. I think they're going to be that expensive. And when we're looking at fading teams, yes, I understand. The Dodgers are going to be a good team. They're going to win 100 games. I don't think that I don't think that's far fetched, and I'm not I'm not sitting here saying the Dodgers are going to win 81 games, and I'm going to bet against them every game. No, they're still going to win 90 to 100 games this year, um, maybe even 102. Um, but I'm going to look to bet against the Dodgers every single game, and my strategy with it's going to be just let the public bet them up and bet it late. Uh, so if you're looking for my Dodger fades, they'll probably be coming about an hour or two before game time when the line's at the absolute highest. So uh, I'm going to be on the Cardinals in this game. I'm going to fade the Dodgers every single game this year. I'm just going to wait because I know that the, the lines are going to keep going up. So uh, give me the Cardinals here in the spot. Uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm going to be on the over in this game. Um, and I think I'm going to be on the over a bunch in Dodger games. I don't trust the Dodger pitching. Um We've, uh, I mean, you saw what happened game two. Obviously, that was uh, Yashimoto um, or Yamamoto, whatever his mm-hmm. name is, um, which I believe is going to be pitching tomorrow. So I might go to look towards the Cardinals tomorrow. But um, I took the over, and it's mostly Miles McCullis. I think he gets blown up. Uh, he's coming off of a really bad year, and, um, and I just don't think he's going to be uh, all that good again this year. I do think the Cardinals have some – nice pieces in terms of their lineup. Uh, and I think you're going to see a big year from Alec Burleson, um, who's finally getting adjusted into the majors. Um, that team, that, that lineup's pretty solid. It's that pitching that is, I don't want to say a question mark, because that's the exclamation point of why this team's going to be bad. Um, the bullpen's going to be awful. The starting pitching's going to be awful. So uh, Cardinals are going to play some high-scoring games. I, got, I, I like the over eight and a half uh, in this one between the, the Cardinals and the Dodgers tomorrow. I could see Dodgers or uh, Dodger overs. Yeah, I could see Dodger overs this year just because they can put up runs. I, I'm not. I'm not going to undersell that lineup that the Dodgers have, which is which their top their top five can only be rivaled by what the Atlanta Braves mm-hmm. uh, in their lineup. Uh, when you look at just what just the talent that the Dodgers do have, I'm not saying they're going to be a bad team. I mean, I mean, when you have a lineup that's started by Mookie Betts, Shohei Otani, Freddie Freeman. And then towards the bottom of your order is Teoscar Hernandez, James Outman, and Jim, uh, Jason Hayward, Gavin Lux. And in the middle is Will Smith and Max Muncy and Teoscar Hernandez. That's a deadly lineup. Um, so. I, I will say, if you want a player prop in this one, and I think I'm going to be a little bit higher on this guy this year because you're not going to see a lot of people interested in him because they didn't really know much with him. That's home runs. I don't need home runs. Hits. Minus 170. Oh, hits are going to be a very juicy. Um, yes. Total bases, maybe? Nope. Yeah. Once again. Um, RBI. Maybe an RBI from him. Plus 240 for an RBI from Gavin Lux. I think that could be a little bit of interesting. Um, uh, I think he's going to have a big year. I think Gavin Lux might be a, a gem, uh, once again, that the, that the Dodgers found. So... Uh, obviously, he missed all of last year. I think he tore his ACL or something like that preseason. Um, yeah. spring training. Keep an eye out for him. Uh, they need to be good. They they just need uh, – they can be good. They just need to stay healthy. Uh, and no, he can't stay healthy. These bats are going to be able to uh, – are going to be and score runs 
Uh, but the pitching is still going to struggle. Yeah, the Cardinals, they're going to struggle pitching. I hate L.A. and the Dodgers and everything they stand for. There you go. Happy opening day. You too, occupancy. And, Nicholas, I'm not bringing up that last comment. We don't need that negative energy here. Um, we'll head to the one game that I do not have a play in. Yeah, I do have a I do have a play in this game here. And I did play a full game uh, in this one here, which is something I really don't do often. Obviously, I'm going to do that with Dodger games. But um, – Toronto Blue Jays and the Tampa Bay Rays in this one here. Minus 135 for the Rays. Total 7.5 in this game. Line opened up at a minus 123. It's now up to a minus 129. So we've had a move towards Tampa Bay. Line opened up at an 8 at even money. It's now an 8 at minus 115. Or 7.5 at minus 115. Move towards the under. And a move towards the uh, the Rays in this game. 57% of the tickets and 94% of the cash is on the Rays. The line moving towards it with 5,185 tickets in. So the sharp money coming in on Tampa Bay in this game, moving the line to it here. Uh, we have a pitching matchup here of uh, Zach Eflin and Jose Barrios. And I give the pitching edge to Eflin in this one here. And so does fan graphs. This is something I, I, I'm looking a lot at fan graphs. Fangraphs has him projected as the 14th best pitcher in baseball, Zach Eflin, which is kind of surprising uh, when you look at that. But um, And he's projected to have a pretty decent year, according to Fangraphs. And and uh, Barrios is still a strong pitcher. He's top 30. I would lean over the total in this game. I'm surprised this line has moved down the way it is. These two teams play a lot of overs against each other. Uh, but I'm on Tampa Bay at minus 134. I get it. It's a little juicy. Um, and I don't like laying this type of juice, but it's under my 140 threshold. That That's kind of like my max is minus 140, uh, unless I would minus one it or something like that. But this Tampa Bay Rays team for me is one of those teams that everybody underestimates. And it's always, it's always Tampa Bay's year um, to regress. It's always Tampa Bay's year to regress. And it's never Tampa Bay's year to regress. They're a team that on paper – is mediocre at best, but with their development and with the whatever the Rays do, they're going to take this roster and they're going to win 90 games this year. How? Got me. But this Tampa Bay Rays team is going to win 90 games this again this year, and everybody's going to act shocked that it happens. Um, I'm not. The Rays are going to be a bet on team for me, and I know a lot of people. And maybe, maybe I, maybe I, 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 I liked the Rays last year a lot too. Uh, cause they're, they're just one of those teams that they're a small market team that knows how to win consistently. They don't have to go through these massive rebuilds. Like we've seen the Royals go through, or we're seeing the pirates go through, or we're seeing the nationals go through the Rays with their development and their, their scouting, their trades, their everything are an anomaly of baseball. And they're the way that small market teams should be basing themselves off of. And I'm going to take a shot here at the Rays at minus 134. I think the Rays are a bet on team this year because somehow, even with this roster that's an average roster, they're going to win 88 to, uh, to 90 games. I don't know how, but they will. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to stick to Tampa Bay going last place in the division. Um, mm-hmm. Although I do like their bullpen, which is going to help them win games. Um, if you're going to bet Rays games, there's going to be a lot of unders. Because this is a team that's going to struggle to score this year. Um, I don't. I'm, I'm not a big fan of their offense. I don't think they're going to be all that good offensively. Uh, Brio should have a good game. You know, I love Zach Eflin. Um, I, I'm high on Zach Eflin. I am. I have been the past couple of years. Um, obviously, Tampa Bay gave him a bunch of money for a reason. He's going to be a solid pitcher. Um, I know I had a Cy Young prop on him last year that everybody thought I was crazy. If he didn't get injured, maybe he might have actually looked halfway decent. But um, I do think Eflin can have another solid year. If I'm going after anything in this game, an under, uh, I could easily see this one being a 3-1 to type of game. Um, am I interested in either one of these two game teams? No. I think um, – ready, ready for this? I think in August area, we can call this a 1-800 gambler game. Really, I think these two teams are going to be the bottom two in the in the AL East. My my bold take for this year: Toronto, Tampa, fight to not be the bottom of the division. There you go. There's my bold take. I don't know about that. I'm kind of interested in this Tampa Bay team total over actually, because I know a lot of people. But 
we said this last year too. Oh, Tampa Bay is going to struggle to hit, and they were one of the best offenses in baseball last year. Yandy yeah, Diaz, Randy Rosarina, yeah. Isaac Paredes. I mean, they got a good top of the lineup, and the prospects coming up for them are going to be good as well. Like, uh, this is a – I'm trying to remember. Yeah, Junior Candelario, the eighth best prospect in baseball. Yeah, I think he's somebody to keep an eye out for. Curtis Mead uh, is also – Somebody keep an eye out for my bad. He's the uh, the, the fourth best prospect in baseball. Conilario Mead is the thirty first, and he's the organization's number one. Um, they've got some good talent coming up through the minors as well. Watch out what Durham has to do this year because uh, Ray's prospects are going to be very good as well. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm still I'm still not going to be high on. Uh, I was looking at plus money for the Blue Jays. I have a feeling that Blue Jays are going to be a team you're going to want to back at home, but not want to back on the road. What up, Big E? Big day tomorrow, indeed. Rays always put a good product on the field. They do. I don't. I don't know how every year, and I don't question it anymore. I will go out and say last place Rays. Uh, Rays and the Bucks. Tampa Bay is going to do some big things this year. Uh, no, they'll make uh, the playoffs. But Bucks will be. Brock Jones. Is that a prospect? Probably. Maybe. Let's head to this game, Nick. This is one I did not get any action, but I, I would love to find reasons to bet one of these teams this year. Actually, both these teams, I think, are potential bet-on teams this year. And I know it sounds crazy, but the San Francisco Giants may be better than people think. Yes. Let's get into it here. This line opened up with the Padres. It's minus 112 favorites. It's down to a 109. So we've had a three-cent line movement here towards San Francisco. Line open up at a seven and a half at minus one ten on both sides. Uh, taking a look at the cash flow in this game, not much. Fifty seven hundred and fifteen tickets in. All I've got is seventy eight percent of the tickets are on the Giants this year, and I think this is a really good buy low opportunity with the San Diego Padres this year. Um, and when we look at this Padres team, yeah, they shedded some. Um, they shedded some salary. Uh, Snell is no longer with the team. And Soto is no longer with the team. I don't think losing Soto is the worst thing in the world for them. Because uh, for me, it just felt like there was too many cooks in the kitchen um, in, in in San Diego. And that may be the problem we have with L.A. this year. There's just too many of them there. Um, and plus, when you look at this, um, when you look at this San Diego team, uh, they still got some talent on the top of their lineup there. Um as this is why is it clicked into the Giants? I want this clicked into the Padres. Um, that's weird. Uh, but yeah, I mean, when you look at their roster here, I mean, they still got players like Fernando Tatis Jr. and Xander Bogarts on um, and Jake Cronenworth. They've got uh Manny Machado, Hung Sung Kim. Uh, they, they've got decent, um, decent uh prospects or not decent prospects, decent line uh, players in their lineup. And when you look at some futures here with the Padres. I've got one here that's not team-based. It's a player-based. How about some Jackson Merrill, rookie of the year? I think this kid's going to be really strong in center field for the San Diego Padres. He's going to break through this year for the Padres and be pretty good. Um, so a lot of talent on this Padres lineup still. Um, and I think this is a team that people are going to be a little bit low on uh, this season. San Francisco is the same way. Uh, this is a, a, a San Francisco team that made some nice additions in the offseason. Um, and they could be flirting with the wild card spot this year. Obviously, nobody's going to catch the Dodgers in this division. We're all aware that Dodgers are the lock for the NL West. I mean, uh, but they got uh, Young Ho Lee from the KBO and they're starting mm -hmm. or their, their leadoff guy. Jorge Soler adds a little pop to that lineup. Matt yep. Chapman was a nice addition. They still yep. got Michael Conforto, which is a nice bat in the middle of their lineup. This is not a bad Giants team either. And after all of this, I don't think I'm playing this game. It would be Padres or nothing for me, just because I think the Padres are a team I would like to back this season, uh, but not a game I'm going to be looking to bet. I like the Giants tomorrow. And I'll say the Giants had the best offseason out of any team in baseball. I'll say that right now. Um, 
just off of what they what they were able to get, I feel like this is actually a really solid offseason for a Giants team that a lot of people are not really going to expect much from. And I wouldn't be surprised if they snuck themselves into the playoffs somehow. Um, Because I know you say Padres making the playoffs, Mets making the playoffs. I think the Giants could be a team that we could possibly see third place in the division and sneak into that third wild card spot. Um, that or right, three, yeah, three wild card spots. I just think it's a, a team that you could possibly see do something this year. Um, I really do like it. So I'm going to be a little bit higher on this uh, on this Giants team, and it'll start by taking them tomorrow versus the Padres. I can get them at minus one hundred five. Yeah, that's going to be just a stay off spot for me. Um, I think this year there won't be as much money value uh, betting against the Padres. Uh, Because when you also look at the Padres, they were the only team to not win double-digit one-run games last year. Hell, even the Athletics won 21 run games last year. Padres went 9-23. and I think that regresses back to the positive, which is why I think the Padres – and the Padres still finished, I think, with 82 wins last year even only winning nine one-run games. They finished with 82 wins or something along those lines. Um, this is a team that just flip around half of those games that they lose, and they're flirting with the playoff spot. I mean, yes, but at the same time, I still, I'm still i still not high on the Padres, but we'll see how it goes. Um, and we'll talk about uh, Rays have a great pipeline of talent. My concern is Toronto with Vladdy. I'm not really concerned with Toronto at all. No, no. Toronto's going to be bad. Um, he has a bounce back. He has a bounce back. He doesn't have to. San Fran went over 7.5 in 48% of their games last season. Uh, San Diego went over in 54% of the 7.5. Should we bet the under? I was looking towards the under. I really like um, Logan Webb. He had a really solid year last year. You saw him in 14, uh, sorry, 33 starts at 3.25 ERA with 194 strikeouts and 216 innings. He's going to be a solid piece of this uh, rotation, and he's going to have it's going to be a solid one-two punch with him and Blake Snell. Um, and that's what I think is going to keep the Giants. In. Not to mention the Giants always have really good bullpen. Like their bullpen is always consistent. So. I do. I, I would look towards the under in this game. Yes, I would look towards the under. Now, here's going to be two seller dwellers, in my opinion. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know about the Pirates, but I do think the Marlins are. Uh, and I know a lot of people like the Marlins, but we'll get into that in just a second. Let's first talk about the line history in this all in the spot here. We have the Miami Marlins minus one thirty favorites total seven and a half here. This line opened up at a one thirty three. It's down to a 128. So we've had a five cent line movement towards the Buccos here in this one here. Uh, line opened up at a seven and a half at even money. It's up to a seven and a half at minus 105. So we have a slightly line move towards the over. And we've had a move towards the Pirates in this one here. Um, and let's take a look at the cash flow in this game here where we have 69% nice of the tickets and 66% of the cash. It's on these Miami Marlins. You have the line moving towards the Pirates in the spot here. Uh, no cash flow on this total whatsoever, with the line moving slightly towards the over. Uh, and taking a look at this matchup here, we have uh, Mitch Keller and Jesus Lazardo in this matchup. Uh, Keller making, I believe, his second consecutive opening day start for the Pirates. Um, he's been a nice little consistent piece for the Pirates over the last few years. Um, and this Miami Marlins team... I may be one of the lowest people on the Miami Marlins this year. Uh, but I, Mitch Keller, I fan graphs has him as a top 20 pitcher in baseball this year. So do with that as you please. Um, I think Mitch Keller has a lot of potential to have a really strong year this year. And on the flip side, Luzardo is somebody who I don't know what to expect from him. He has one of the wider range of outcomes when you look at pitchers in general in the MLB this year, because he can either be somebody who pitches really well, absolutely dominates um, and looks like one of the better pitchers in baseball, or he can be a complete slob and give up five runs a game. 
Like there, there's a very wa- a w- wide range of outcomes here. And I think we're going to see a little bit more negative from him than positive this year. Um, and I like the Pirates in this spot here. I'm going to look to fade the Marlins this year an awful lot. And when you look at this Marlins roster, it's just built weird is the best way I can describe it. And when you look at it, one thing I, th- I think is going to really struggle with the Marlins this year was their strength last year. It's their pitching. They're starting pitching. Jesus Lazardo is their starting pitcher. Yeah, uh-huh. And that uh, they're number one. Fine. I like that. Cool. AJ Puck, Ryan Weathers, Trevor Rogers, and Max Mayer are your two through four. Why? Sandy Alcantara had Tommy John surgery. Edward Cabrera has shoulder impingement. Braxton Garrett starting the year on the IR with shoulder soreness. And Yuri Perez has elbow inflammation. They're missing four really solid starting pitchers. I believe two of them are guaranteed to be out the whole year. Sandy Alcantara is not going to touch a baseball field this year. No, he's not. And part of next year as well, Um, which is very unfortunate. I think he's one of the bright pitchers in the entire game. Sandy Alcantara. Uh, so, and he was one of the most durable pitchers that the Marlins, the most durable pitcher in baseball last year uh, when he was healthy. I think the Marlins, this is a massive step down this year. I love the Marlins under their win total. I like them to finish last in the National League East. I think the, the Nationals will be a little bit better this year than people think. And I doubled up on the Pittsburgh Pirates in this game. I got the Pittsburgh Pirates in the first five at plus 115. I got them in the full game at plus 116. I really like the Pirates in this spot here, and I'm going to look to fade the Marlins as much as possible. I think the Marlins are a must-fade this year, and uh, we're going to take the recency bias of them sneaking into a, a playoff spot last year somehow, some way, and we're going to use it against them here. I think the Marlins are going to be a bad baseball team this year, and we're going to make some good money fading them. I'm going to start it here. Let's raise the Jolly Roger first five-full game. Let's do it. Um, all right, here's division uh, placement for Miami Marlins. Let's find Miami. Ba-ba-da, Miami Marlins. They're favored to finish fourth in the division. If you want them to finish last place in the division, eight to one. Sign me up. Oh, I, I, I do like that. And then one of the other ones I really like, I want to try to find the odds for that one. But, well, I mean, we'll talk about that team in a minute. Um where is Red Sox third place 450 anyways um I'm on the Pirates as well uh I like Mitch Keller he's gonna be a pitcher that I'm gonna be back in a bunch this year coming off of a I mean for playing with the Pirates a solid year last year 13 and 9 4.91 year uh, 4.21 ERA one complete game uh, 210 strikeouts and 194 and third innings pitch. Obviously, he's got good, some good stuff. He got named the starting, uh, the opening day starter. Um, I'm not high on this Marlins team with you. Um, I think they're going to be last place again, uh, as you mentioned. Um, I because I am higher in the uh, Nationals. We'll talk about them in a minute. Um, I'm, I'm gonna be on the Pirates at a little bit of a nice, uh, nice plus, uh, place little plus money price tag for this one. Yep. Pittsburgh still sixth most profitable team last year with a record of 76 and 86. Yes, they were because they were plus money a lot. There you go. Speaking of uh, the Nationals, uh, they're, they're, they're going up against a team that I know a lot of people are high on that. I think people should back down on, but we'll see. Let, let's get into it here. Uh, we have the... Uh, Cincinnati Reds and the or and the Washington Nationals. The Reds minus one fifty five favorites in this game. Total of nine in this game. Uh, on Bet Online, this line opened up at one forty five. It's up to a one forty seven. So we've had a line move towards the Cincinnati Reds in this spot. We have this line opened up at a nine at minus one hundred five, and it's up to a nine at minus one twelve. So we've had a move towards the over in this game as well. Which this over can be an interesting look as well. Um, in this game that I didn't, I never even thought of that may, may be a decent look. 81% of the tickets, 94% of the cash on the Reds money line. The lines moved a couple cents towards it. The Reds are going to be a little bit of a public team this year. I think I, I see a lot of love for this Reds team and I understand they've got a good roster and they've got good prospects coming up, 
and they had a decent start to the season last year and people think they can bring that decent success from this year and uh, from last year and step it up this year and and, and increase it um They've got one of the best closers in baseball with Alexis Diaz, who is ranked number five, according to Fangraphs, for, um, for, re- for relief pitching. One problem that I see with the Reds here is um, their starting rotation, um, which actually it's not as bad as we think. Frankie Montas, I don't know what to expect from him. Uh, Hunter Green could be good. Graham Ashcraft could be good. Um, Nick Lodolo is starting the year off hurt. Uh, we don't know when he's going to be back uh, for that rotation kind of needs Nick Lodolo. I think Nick Martinez is not somebody I'm relying on. Andrew Abbott's decent. Uh, so actually now looking a little deeper now, it's not the worst thing in the world. Uh, they have a nice top of the lineup, India, De La Cruz, Steer, Fraley, Candelario. After that kind of falls off though, Benson, Encarnacio, and Strand, Martini, and Stevenson. Um, this Nationals team is – a team that I think can make a little bit of a step up this year. And the prospects that the Nationals have are kind of interesting uh, for them to maybe win a couple extra games this year than they did last year. And uh, when you when we look at it here, their starting rotation is going to struggle a little bit. You still have Patrick Corbin, uh, Jake Irving, and Trevor Williams making starts for you in the year 2024. Uh, but Mackenzie Gore and Josiah Gray, I think, present some nice upside for this Nationals um, rotation. The bullpen's not t- terrible. I like the Dylan Florio uh, uh, addition that they made, I believe, in the offseason here. Um, the Ro- um, Robert Garcia ranks okay. Jordan Weems could be interesting. And then Honey Harvey and Kyle Fr- uh, Finnegan in the back end of their bullpen, I think, is really strong. Um their prospects coming up look decent. I really like C.J. Abrams this year to take another step up. He was part of the Juan Soto trade that sent him to the Padres. Uh, Lane Thomas is another one. I like Joey Manessis. Uh, I mean, Jesse Winker in the middle of that lineup. Joey Gallo, if he can revitalize his swing, could be interesting as well. This is an interesting Nationals team that I'm not writing off to finish last in the National League East this year. Uh, right. So it's a pass for me at the moment. I would only lean Natties in this game. I would only lean Natty's first five. And their bullpen's not bad, so maybe Natty's full game, but I don't know. I like the Nationals in this one. Um, I like Josiah Gray. I think he's a solid, solid pitcher. Um, and I think he's somebody that I, I'd be interested in looking um, to back more often this year. He was one of the bright spots for this Nationals team last year. Eight and thirteen record, but it's, your record's not going to be good when you're pitching for the Nationals. Three point nine one ERA, one hundred and fifty nine innings pitched, one hundred forty three strikeouts, and sixty nine earned runs. Um, he was one of the bright spots for this Nationals team, and I think he takes another big step up this year. Where you never know, come later on in the year, maybe his name can be thrown in the hat for Cy Young this year. Um, I think he could have a, a, a decent year. Um, Frankie Montas coming off of a year that he he, he made one start. Um, so I'm not really – like, he, he, he pitched one time last year. Um, I think he might come out a little bit rusty. And I'm not high on this Reds team. Not at all. Um, I'll take the Nationals as a little bit of a dog. Yeah. I would like to see Montas pitch well. have to admit it. I'm a fan. Hey. I need to see him pitch well in order for me to want and be interested in backing him. Um, so there you, there you go with that. Uh, how about an AL Central matchup? Yeah, this is this game is kind of gross, but let's get into it here. We have the Detroit Tigers and the Chicago White Sox uh, in this matchup here. The Tigers are pretty significant favorites in this spot. Uh, I'm seeing minus 175 on Bet Online. Um, line opened up 173. It's up to 175. Uh, so we've had a slight move towards the the Tigers in this game. Line opened up at an eight. It's down to an, a seven and a half. So we've had a move towards the under. We've had a slight move towards the Tigers in this game here. 60% of the tickets are on the Tigers run line. 87% of the tickets, 92% of the cash on the Tigers money line in this game here. I have absolutely no interest in this game. I wanted to back the Tigers in this game. I was hoping they were going to be more more along the lines of minus 150. So I can minus one line them and move on um, in this game. 
And I kind of lean first five under. I think Crochet could be decent. Um, yes, we'll talk about him in a minute. But overall, this White Sox team is not a team I particularly want my money on this year. I I think that the White Sox are a team we're going to be talking about at the end of the season. We're going to be like, damn, they lost more games than the Athletics did. Um, I mean, when you have your when you have the absolute powerhouse rotation of Garrett Crochet, which has potential, he was the first uh, an eleventh overall pick in twenty twenty, mm-hmm. with Michael Soroka, Eric Fetty, and Chris Flexen. That's your starting rotation right now. This is the yeah. worst team in baseball. This is the worst team in baseball. And yes, there's the Athletics too, but your rotation: Andrew Benintendi is your leadoff guy. Yon uh, Makata can't stay healthy. Luis Robert and Aloy Menez probably won't finish the year with the White Sox. No, Andrew Ball. Sure. Yeah. DeYoung, like this is not a good lineup. Their bullpen's terrible too. Michael Kopech, your, your closer. Steven Wilson, John Barbria, Tim Hill, Tanner can I, Banks. Can I say, I think Kopech's going to work really nicely as a closer. He may be a decent closer, but this team sucks. Oh, and yeah. they're going to do nothing this year, the White Sox. They're going to finish last in the AL Central. They are probably going to finish with the worst record in baseball. And yep. I do not want my money anywhere near this White Sox team. I would, I would like to just continuously fade this team. And maybe the way to do that is maybe wait for Crochet to get out of the game because Crochet is like, the only pitcher we can really semi-rely on with the with the, with the the White Sox this year. Every other pitcher, I'm going to probably look for team total overs and run lines and stuff like that fading the White Sox this year. Uh, so um, for me – it's. I mean, I wanted the Tigers in this game. Maybe a Tiger team total over, but um, it's gonna be a pass for me in this game. Um, not at this price for the Tigers. I think the Tigers will, are improved, not that much. I will say, I think Garrett Kirchett's gonna be solid. Um, and, and one thing I like to look for when it comes to uh, pitchers, and, and in terms of, because obviously we haven't really seen much from. Croce, he pitched all of – he appeared in 13 games as a reliever last year with 12 and two-thirds innings, um, 12 strikeouts in those innings, 3.55 URA. Um, but when you get a first-round pick, 11th overall, out of the University of Tennessee, um, I think he could be I – I think he could have a solid season. Um, so I, I do like uh, – I am going to be on the, on the White Sox in this one. A little bit of a home dog, oh, not a little bit. A plus one fifty-five home dog. Um, I think every. I, I, I trust me. Scooble is going to be solid. Scooble is going to be good. Um, he's going to be one of the Cy Young candidates this year, or and one of the better pitchers in baseball. Uh, the way that the line's moving, give me the give me the White Sox at home here. Uh, I'll grab them as a little bit of a dog. I just think that the uh, the Tigers are going to be solid. I think minus 180 on the road is a little bit too much off the rim. So uh, um, let, let's take the White Sox here. Yep. Nick, to be profitable, you'd have to average close to plus 200 on your money line fading the Dodgers every game. If they win 100 games, you're talking about a win percentage only around 38%. Mm-hmm. Yep. Don't be that big of dogs. Yeah. Fetty come uh, came back. Uh, he yeah. he was in Asia for a little bit. Yeah, flexing. Yeah, and I'm guessing this is Lenny. Slow down. I will be right there to tell you why the Detroit Tigers are winning the AL Central. Or 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 we move on to the next game when we don't have to hear about the Tigers anymore, and we'll talk. I think about the Tigers teams. can win the Central though. And we'll talk about I'm teams that not, will not, actually not, compete this year. I'm just not laying minus 180 on the road with them. Uh, that's that's fair. pretty simple for me there, uh, but. We'll get into it here. The New York Yankees are taking on the Houston Astros. I have moved on this game here. We have the Astros around minus 155 favorites, total of eight and a half in this game. We have Nestor Cortez taking on Framer Valdez. Obviously, Nestor Cortez was not intended to be the starter for the Yankees in this game. It was supposed to be Garrett Cole. It's not. So line opened up at a 150. It's up to now 152. Line opened up an eight and a half at minus 120. It's now an eight and a half at minus 118. So we've had a slight move towards the under. We've had a slight move towards the Astros in this game here. And 
Looking at the cash flow in the spot, 64% of the tickets and 81% of the cash is on the Astros. The line's moved in that direction. And then we have 86% of the tickets are on the under in this game. The line's moving slightly that, that way as well. Um, and for me, the Astros are the best team in baseball. Um, that That's pretty simple for me. Um, I like the Astros to win the most regular season games this year. I know everybody loves the Dodgers, loves the Braves. Give me the Astros for that. Uh, I think this team clears 100 wins this year. There, You're still looking at one of the best lineups in baseball um, with Altuve, Alvarez, Tucker, Bregman, Abreu, Yonor Diaz I think is going to be good. Chas McCormick's hitting seventh. Jeremy Pena's hitting eighth. And the beautiful thing is Yonder Diaz is taking over and uh, to add a, a bat to the lineup and who they're taking out, Martin Maldonado, the worst hitting catcher in baseball, um, who is strictly in there for defense. Framer Valdez is a top 10 pitcher in baseball. He's a potential Cy Young candidate. Javier, uh, Christian Javier, Hunter Brown, Rano Blanco, and JP France, I think all have a lot of potential. This bullpen's absolutely sick. Um, Josh Hader is in the back of your bullpen. Ryan Presley's now your setup man, who is one of the best closers in baseball for the last few years. Brian, uh, and then Brian Abreu is your seventh inning guy. Uh, Rafael Montero is another bullpen arm in there that I really like. The back end of this this Astros bullpen is the best bullpen in baseball. Yes. And I think the Astros are the best team in baseball. They are my world series pick this year. And I took the Astros minus one minus one Oh six to start the season here in the spot. Uh, I think the Astros are going to be a bet on team for me. Um, and I'll start off here with the Astros minus one to beat the Yankees in the game in the first game. I'll be on the Astros run line. Um, I'm not high on this Yankee team. Although I will, if it, if it was anybody other than Framber Valdez, I'd probably look towards the over in this game too. Um, this Yankee team is going to have offense. That, that's for sure. They're one. They're one hundred percent going to have offense this year. Now, pitching is going to be a struggle for them. I don't think N- uh, Nestor Cortez is going to have another big year. Um, he had a bad year last year, although his year was plagued by injuries. Um, he only made twelve starts. Um, but I just don't see him having a big bounce back season. I think Framber Valdez has a chance to throw his hat in the ring for Cy Young. Um, so you, you got an Astros team that I think is the second best team in the AL. And yes, I'm Orioles. I think are still the best team in the AL, um, this year. Um, but I think you got an Astros team that can really, really play. And would I be surprised if there's 200 win teams in the AL and it's the Orioles and the Astros? No, not at all. There could be 400 win teams in baseball this year between them two and then the Dodgers and, and Braves. So I like the Astros in this one. Yeah. Hello, Markel. Hey, guys, let's go Mets. Yes, let's go Mets, except for, um, unfortunately, they don't play tomorrow. Under. I'm going to say no to the under. And the only reason why is I think the Astros put up runs. And I, I don't think Framber Ball, I, I don't, I think the Yankees will score a couple. You never know. A bloop and a blast. Um, because, you know, the Yankees have big bats in their lineup. Or just a couple of missed. Because you got to keep in mind, it's opening day. Pitchers are not going to be the sharpest that they can be. And they'll miss on a couple spots, and the Yankees will make them pay for it. I could easily see the Yankees scoring two to three runs in this game, finishing six to three. Um, so I don't know about the under. Maybe a first five under if you're going to go after anything in this one occupancy. But because uh, – Come later on in the game, I do not trust the Yankee bullpen. I I see if I think if you like a full game under, I would take more of the Yankee team total under route. Uh, and I and I and I would look full game with that because the Astros maybe would be one of the only teams I can trust full game unders with because of their back of the bullpen, how strong it is. Mm-hmm. Because I mean, you have one of the better bullpens in baseball, and you only go out and get Josh Hader to bolster it. Exactly, so. it could be solid. It could be solid. We'll head to this one, which I know a lot of people are going to have a certain opinion on one of these teams. Yeah, and I put a bold prediction out for one of these teams uh, today. Actually, for both these teams today. Uh, I have one of these teams missing the playoffs. I have another one making the championship series. Take a guess which one's which. Uh, (laughs) The Chicago Cubs and the reigning World Series champion, Texas Rangers. The Rangers open up at a minus 120. They're down to a 114 now on bet online. So we've had a move towards the Chicago Cubs in this game. Line open up at an eight and a half at even money. It's down to an eight at minus 118. 
uh, taking a look at the cash flow in this game here, where we have uh, 30 or uh, 61% of the tickets, but only 53% of the cash on the Texas Rangers and the lines moving towards the Cubs in this game. 75% of the tickets are on the run line for the Rangers as well. But how many people are really laying minus one, what minus 185 for uh, a, a plus one and a half run line with the Cubs in this game? Um, and looking at this um, matchup here in this one, I think this is potentially your National League Cy Young winner um, pitching for the Cubs today or tomorrow with Justin Steele. Um, I truly think the ceiling for Justin Steele is a Cy Young award this year. Uh, Fangraphs has him ranked as 12th best in uh, baseball for starting pitching. This top of the lineup is really strong too. Ian Happ, Seiya Suzuki, Cody Bellinger, Christopher Morrell, Dansby Swanson. I love this Cubs team this year. Uh, and then Nico Horner's hitting seventh, projected seventh for this lineup. This is a good lineup the Cubbies have in this one. And I put in my bold prediction, the Cubs make the NL Central, uh, NLCS this year. Um, I can see them winning the division, knocking off a team like the Dodgers or the Braves in the first round, but then falling in the CS to the other one. Um, this is a Cubbies team that can make some noise this year. And I think it starts with this one here. I love fading the banner raising as well. We have the public on the Rangers, the line moving towards the Cubs. So the, the market showing no concern toward that Ranger money. And for me, this is one of my favorite plays of the day. Spoiler alert for the people who are going to watch the free pick later. I'm on the Cubs. First five full game, double up spot in this one. Plus, one oh, uh, plus 100 for the first five, plus 104 for the full game. Hey, Chicago, what do you say? Cubs are going to win today. Maybe the Cubbies, first five full game here. I will say this is a 7 o'clock game. It's the only 7 o'clock game. Mm. So, uh Definitely big. I definitely like that. That's the only seven o'clock game. It it's definitely a good. I like what the MLB would did with it because all of a sudden now you get this is your banner raising night for the for the Texas Rangers, and you know what we do during banner raising nights? We fade them. I am on the Cubbies in this game. Um, it's a Cubbies team that I think he finished second place. Well, I will say I did take the Brewers to win the division. Um, I took it a while ago when Corbin Burns was still on the team. Um, now they're without the race. I'm not as confident with that pick anymore, but I'm going to stick with it. Um, I think the Cubs are the best team in the division. Now. Um, I think the Cubs to win the division. Um, obviously, I'm not going to bet it because I don't think there's – uh, I, I could try to edge out of my Brewers bet, but I'm not going to bother with it. It was only it was only a couple of dollar bet. Uh, I think the Cubs are the best team in the division, and I think Texas takes a, a little bit of a uh, a step back this year. So um, give me the Cubbies a little bit of plus money. Yeah. Also, if you're feeling a little frisky, um, season win or season win total under and uh, to miss the playoffs for the Texas Rangers. I like it. Can I go over Cubbies? Over total, over team total, over wins, over I what? Like that. I, I think this is like a three to two game. I don't think this one's a crazy high scoring game. So let's head to the 10 o'clock games, Nick. All right, here we go. You ready to ride the wave again this year? The Oakland Athletics. As long as we'll be able to call them Oakland, we'll keep calling them Oakland because it may be the Vegas A's soon. Um, against the Cleveland Guardians, two teams that. I don't think are going to come anywhere near a playoff spot this year. No. Um, and very unfortunate for the Guardians, Gavin Williams will be starting on the IR to start the year, I heard. Oh. So, but this line opened up at a minus 157 for the Guardians. It's down to a 153. Line opened up at a 7.5 at even money, and it has stayed there. Uh, taking a look at the cash flow in this game, 81% of the tickets and 93% of the cash on the Guardians and lines moving towards Oakland in this game here. Here we go again. Sharp money on Oakland. Line moving towards Oakland. Like it was all season long last year. But you know what? I'm going to ride the wave for the first game here. First five at plus 130. I am not high on this Guardians team whatsoever. Um, and this Guardians team, I mean, Shane Bieber is beginning to be past his prime. Uh, he's getting up there. Um They've really got nothing around Jose Ramirez for this 
for this lineup. Um, I don't even I don't even think Jane Bieber is the best on the rotation either. I think Tanner Bybee has the potential to be better than him. I, I agree. Um, on you do? Yeah, I think Bibby's going to have a big big year. Yeah. They have Quan, Jimenez, and Naylor around Ramirez, which is eh. Uh, but for me, and I get it, Oakland – I like Oakland over their win total, which is 57 and a half, um, which is a really, really low number for the Oakland A's. I get it. They were terrible last year. That was that was a terrible team last year. And I don't think they're going to get any better. Um, like, I, they're not going to be a, a world beater. Their bullpen still sucks. Their rotation still sucks. Their, their lineup still sucks. But I think 60 wins is in their future uh, for this year. And that's 58 wins is all you're really asking for this athletics team to get over their win total. Um, I'm just taking a shot with the first five here, plus 130 with the Oakland A's. Um, and then I'll get ready for uh, Paul Blackburn days. Those are those are the days. And J.P. Sears are the two pitchers I'm going to really want to back with this team this year. God damn it. Am I riding the wave again, really? Ride the wave! Um, yeah, I'm on the Oakland Athletics. I think this team is going to – I. I'm not saying this team's going to be good. I'm not saying by any stretch of the imagination this team's going to be good. They're going to lose 100 games. But they may win 60. Um, yeah. But this is a team that's got some young talent um, that is coming up that could be could be interesting. Uh, I know Ruiz had a really big year last year. He was a rookie last year, a lot of stolen bases. I think he could be one of the highest stolen bases players in baseball. Um I would say the only one that I think would be close to Ruiz that would give him competition for the most stolen bases in baseball is Abrams from Washington. I think yes. that could be an interesting prop as well. And Bobby Witt. Um, other, and then, I mean, you can you could say Ronald Acuna, fine, but um, I would want to go after some nice plus money. Uh, I think Alex Wood could be interesting. Um, I, I, I don't mind Alex Wood. He's coming off of a year in San Francisco, granted. San Fran, a lot better of a pitching ballpark. But uh, Oakland's a solid pitching ballpark, too. Uh, so don't get me wrong with that oh, yeah. one. Um, give me the athletics money line to start off the year. Screw it. Do it. Stay mm-hmm. off. Go, go A's. Oakland money line. Yes, we're all degenerates betting the Oakland athletics. <laughs> Let's do it. Um, but that will not be the last dog I take for today because we got this game. Yeah, this one's an interesting one here where we have the Boston Red Sox and the Seattle Mariners in this game. Uh, We have the Mariners sitting around minus 170, minus 175 favorites in this game with a total of 7.5. Taking a look at this line history where we have this line open up at a 168 on bet online. We're looking at a 166 for the – I was about to say the Kraken now – for the Mariners. Uh, in this game, line opened up at a seven and a half plus one hundred five. It's a seven and a half at minus one hundred three. So we've had a move towards the over, and we've had a move towards the Red Sox in this game. Here we have no cash flow on this total, but we have forty one percent of the tickets and ninety two percent of the cash is on Boston in this game. And the only way I can look in this game is Boston. Now, when when looking at this matchup here, uh, we have for the the pitching matchup Luis Castillo and Brian Bayo. Um, Brian Bayo, I think, has some potential with the Red Sox um, this year. He took a little bit of a step up last year. He got a nice little extension, and we'll see what he can do this year. Um, uh, Fangrass has him projected the 66th best pitcher in baseball, the best pitcher on the staff. Nick Bavetta, Cutter Crawford, Garrett Whitlock, and Tanner Houck are your rounds out the rotation for the Red Sox this year. They have a top 25 reliever in baseball, Kenley Jansen, number 25. Uh, in their closing role this year. Rafael Devers is second in that lineup. John, uh, Jaron Duran projected top there. Trevor Story coming back this year. Trishy Kashas, Tyler O'Neill, um, Masataka Yoshida. So they have a decent lineup. They have an okay rotation. You look at the other side here, though, the Mariners can be very, very good this year. Um, and I think they're going to be – and a dog fight with the Astros potentially for this division. I see the Mariners winning north of 90 games this year. Um, and I would like to make an argument for the Seattle Mariners being the best rotation in baseball. 
yep. Luis Castillo, George Kirby, Logan Gilbert, Bryce Miller, and then they have Emerson Hancock as their fifth starter right now. Dude, he's going to be solid. But but um, he's not going to be the five starter for long because uh, when he gets back off the IR, it'll be our good old buddy Brian. Woo! Uh, for for the in that rotation as well. That that may be the best rotation in baseball. Uh, the Seattle Mariners there, uh, which is going to make them a very deadly team. Um, I'm staying off this game at the moment. I can only look Red Sox in this game. Maybe a Red Sox team total, but I really don't want to take overs against the Mariners this year. Um, because I don't know about their offense, but their pitching is going to be so good this year. Yeah, no, I, as crazy as it sounds. These are two teams that are going to be bet on for me uh, this year. I am very high on the Red Sox this year. I really? think they have the opportunity to make the playoffs. Like, really? I think they have that high. Uh, I'm not going to put high expectations on them, but I could easily see this team finishing third in the division. And if, if the other well. team, and if the Yankees are not careful, second in the division. I know that sounds a little bit crazy. I know I'm it quite is. high on the Red Sox because they'll you, you notice it they'll they'll <laughs> suck one year and then the next year they'll go absolutely batshit crazy. And I'm not because obviously I have the Orioles winning the division. I wouldn't be surprised if Boston comes in second, um, th- second or third because I am not high on the race. I am not high on the Blue Jays and the Yankees have pitching problems. I think Boston's has got a decent pitching staff. I think their bullpen will be solid enough, and they've got the offense. Um, now Seattle, I think has a shot to realistically win the division. Um, Absolutely, they do. Absolutely, uh, they do. So they're going to be a dogfight with uh, Houston. Yeah, I think it's going to be a two-man race there. I mean, Texas could be involved, but I'm going to go with Seattle and Houston. Um, yes. That being said. I'm not going to ignore a little bit of plus money. I was able to get around plus 140, 150 area with the Boston Red Sox tomorrow. Um, so I'll be on the Red Sox opening day. I think that's not a bad look. That's a that's a dog I'm kind of interested in. I just haven't pulled the trigger on him. Uh, wow, Nick, you're even higher on the Mariners than I am. I'm just saying they're they have the they potentially have the best rotation in baseball. That's all. I'm, I I can I can see them. Yeah, they're going to be in a dog fight. But yeah. And uh, let's head to the final game, which. Yeah, yeah, yeesh. I think you can make an argument for uh, for one of these teams being the worst team in baseball this year, and it's kind of the obvious one. I think the uh, the Rockies could also compete with the White Sox to be the worst team in baseball this year. Yeah. Uh, let's get into it here. Line opened up at a two eighteen. It's up to a two thirty five. I have no interest in the Diamondbacks at this big of a number, particularly. Line yeah. opened up at an eight. It's up to an eight and a half. So we have had a move toward the over in this game here. We've had a move towards the Diamondbacks. 28% of the tickets, 99% of the cash is on the Rockies in this game, 4,715 tickets in. 80% of the tickets are on the Diamondbacks' run line, though. So most of the tickets coming in on the run line, we usually see that. It's very similar to hockey where these type of lines will see puck line action on the favorite and money line action on the dog. That's why you can't really read too much into it. Um, and then 50-50 split on the, t- on the total, and we're starting to see eight and a halfs and nines pop up. Um, in this game, I really don't have to, this is one of those games where I have absolutely no interest in this one. Um, the Rockies are a team that, um, are bet against or nothing for me, but do I really want to lay a number like this with the Diamondbacks? The answer is probably no. Um, I get it. The Diamondbacks are going to be a good team this year. Um, are they good enough to compete in that division? Probably. Could they be one of those teams on the outside looking in at the end of the year? Maybe because, the Giants have improved. I think the Padres will regress positively. The Dodgers are in that, still in their division. And the Phillies are in the uh, East. The Mets are in the East. We have the, the uh, Cubs in the Central. I mean, this could be a team that finds its way out. I'm not going to – I'm not I, – I, I, I don't know if I would bet it. Uh, but um, I, I, I'm, I have no interest in this game at all. Um, but, I, I mean – Diamondbacks at this number, no, thank you. I get it; the Rockies are bad, but I like the Diamondbacks to win the division. So I'm high. On, once again, I'm high on the Diamondbacks team. Um, they've got some very young talent that I'm very interested in, and uh, yeah, this is gonna be a Colorado Rockies team that's going to be the worst team in the National League, and could very well be the worst team in baseball. Um, 
I'm going to be on the over in this game because uh, I wanted to take them max, but uh, the run line was minus 115. I'm not laying minus 115 on a run line, especially on a home team. Just not something I want to be interested in. Um, so for me, I'll take the over eight and a half. I think the Arizona Diamondbacks score, maybe even an Arizona team total over. I think Gosh, it's a four and a half around minus 125, 130. I don't mind that at all. Um, so I would look towards runs with uh, the Diamondbacks. I, obviously, this Colorado team is going to be bad. Yeah, they're and the thing with this Colorado team is they did nothing in the offseason. Nothing. They, ne- they never do anything. They never do anything. Okay. I don't understand. As long as we address that, they've never done anything. So, um, but yeah, uh, over in that game for me. Uh, that is all the games for um, opening day. Obviously, Mets, Brewers postponed due to rain. Braves and Phillies postponed due to rain. That's why we didn't get to talk about those two games. It is what it is. Um, that is all the games for today's for opening day. Um, we'll do a quick uh, recap and everything before we head on out. If you guys are new to the channel, like, comment, subscribe, share, do all that good stuff. We appreciate all the support. Check out all the links in the description below. YouTube, Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram. All the socials. Make sure you guys are checking those out. Um, and uh, kind of a recap for this card. Orioles, run line. Royals, money line. The over in the Dodger game. I like the Giants, Pirates, Nationals, White Sox, Astros run line, Cubs, A's, Boston, and the over in the Arizona game. Yes, I went crazy on opening day. I wanted to have a little bit of action on opening day. Don't bet a lot of money on each one of these, but I I have I have an I have a little bit on each game, um. So, um, yes, lots and lots of plays for tomorrow. But I'm ready for some baseball. Yeah, I'm gonna start my day off with the Angels first five, and then Astros minus one, uh, Pirates first five full game, Royals first five, Rays money line, Cubbies first five full game, Oakland first five, and um, that's it for me. Let's get it. Uh, Back to here. Moist. 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 Hi, Tam. Hi, Nick. How are you doing? Any thoughts on the Astros and the New York Yankees? Astros Astros minus one for me. Astros run line. Uh, That's going to do it for this edition of the Earl Sports Bet Show. Um, Baseball edition will be back tomorrow morning um, with hockey and college basketball for you guys. Until next time, good luck.